Vegas. We have about 300 people here in this room. We're going to talk about the issues, the challenges that plague the county of Nakuru. This is the bedrock of the Rift Valley. It used to be the whole old headquarters of Rift Valley Province. So Nakuru, a cosmopolitan, fast-growing town with equally huge challenges. We're going to talk about that in the next 60 minutes or so. Before we get to our distinguished panel of guests, there's a package that's been prepared by our very own KTN correspondent. Let's take a look. Nakuru County, the fourth largest county in the country, a county that has been home to thousands of flamingos at Lake Nakuru. This is, however, before the effects of the recent flooding that displaced a number of flamingos. The county also boasts of leading in production of some agricultural produce, such as potatoes and pyrethrum. Maize and wheat production is also common here. Agriculture contributes up to 48% of the county's revenue. In efforts to encourage farmers, the county government distributed 1 million pyrethrum seed links to farmers seeking to revive the production of the crop. The county government also distributed fertilizer to 11,000 small-scale farmers. The farmers, however, say there is still more to be done. When the potatoes are ready, we usually, we also sell to the brokers, of which they are the ones who dictate the places to the farmers. In that case, if at all, we can get uh, good markets uh, or processing plants uh, through the county government, actually the farmers can really benefit from there because they can sell, be selling the potatoes as a fixed uh, place. Sasa kutukisha vuna, tuna mali wa kuhuza ya mabroka ndi wanatunulia hapa. Sasa tukona asara sababu mbegu, tuna nunua beikali, haya kulima pia bado ndio hiyo inapanda juu. Sasa baada ya kulima hiyo yote, sisi wa kulima tuna faida sababu kulima, sasa unawana tulima hii mahindi, natuna mali wa kuhuza. Kama sirio sasa wakifungua, tuna sasa sasa tukauza hiyo gano mzuri, juu sasa sirio wa maweka bei mzuri. Hadi watu wa naweza kutusaidia. Horticulture is one of the top foreign exchange earners for Kenya and it is estimated that the industry generates up to $1 billion in earnings annually. But workers in these flower farms decry over myriad of problems, some of which include their benefits after long service. Treatment ya wafanya kazi unaona, mire watasa wachukua kama wafanya kazi, tunachukuriwa kama watu wafai yata kujiongea. So kama saizu unaona watu wa union wakianda kuongeresha wafanya kazi, tunaharaziwa baka inafika wa? Senic with pleasant weather, Nakuru County has, however, over the years been associated with political tension, particularly in relation to the general elections. Tunaona tuiko na usiano na hawa karijini sana sana sana. Kwa mana hata mahali tulitoka mashamba huko, tunawasha vitu yetu, hine hiko huko. Provision of water is also a major challenge in some parts of Nakuru. In areas such as Kiamuni, residents say the taps or pipes that used to supply water from Naruwasko five years ago have since dried up. Napolila hapa tumekuwa na shida ya maji sana sana. Since then, misi jayo na maji kifuru kwa taps. So, tunapataka maji mpui kinyesha. So personally, I had to go and request them to, to remove my nail from the computer because when I get a bill of 6,000 and I've not gotten water in two years, I'm not going to pay. I wish it was re water rationing because it was, if it was water rationing, that, then we would be sure that we have water specific days of the week. But now we don't. Many have opted to construct water reservoirs to tap rainwater. They say these water tank lorries are making booming business in this area. Residents pay up to 4,000 shillings for a 10,000 litre tank. This translates to up to 1.2 million shillings for 10 households in one month. This has been cited as a possible revenue avenue for the county government. Other areas facing the same challenge include Freehold, Kaptembo, Free area, Langa Langa, among other areas. Kamchemenza for KTN in Nakuru County. Thank you very much. That was uh, KTN's Kamche Manze on the issues. Menza, rather. Kamche Menza. My apologies. On the issues and the challenges affecting Nakuru County. Now, because this is a live program we encourage you to tweet in whether you're in Nakuru County or around the country the Twitter handle here is at UNDP Kenya you can also use at KTN Kenya you can tweet me at Koinanga Jeff use the hashtag 
Sikika Sasa. Now, moving right along, we also have a sign language translator because we have some folks here in the house. Jeffrey Owino will start it off and he will be joined a little later on by Aminga Jeremiah. Now, straight to our guests' questions. Again, I keep saying, people, this is about you, the people. Sikika Sasa is about you. Kwasababu Kama Si Sasa. There we go. On my extreme right, please welcome the governor of the county of Nakuru, former AP boss, Kino the Ambohua. Right next to him is Irene Derry Paul. She's the MCA, nominated member of the county assembly representing the National Alliance, TNA. <laughs> On my extreme left is Dr. Paulus Bashira. He's uh, from the Center for Conflict Research and he's also a lecturer at Edgerton University. Welcome, all. <laughs> Again, get your questions ready because these are your leaders and you have to question them and hold them accountable. I'll start off with a question then, Governor. It's only fair that I ask you this question because you've literally, minutes ago, a few, yeah, literally an hour or so ago, you just came from Orcaria, the latest project where it's going to provide something like 140 megawatts of electricity onto the national grid, reducing prices, making life a lot easier for the people, not just of Kenya, in particular Nakuru County, because it's in your county. My question is, why are there still blackouts in Nakuru town, Governor? There was a blackout this afternoon, and yesterday people are telling me there was a blackout. Governor, Kwani? Uh, th th thank you very much, Jeff. Um, it is a fact that uh, Nakuru is, at, as we talk, the, the greatest source of uh, energy uh, in this country and, uh, and perhaps in the, in the whole region. And uh, I do agree with you once in a while, uh, we still have been having um, uh, blackouts here and there, but um, of course, uh, this is uh, explainable in the sense that um, uh, these uh, new power sources uh, are just being installed. And as you have rightly said, uh, His Excellency the President has just commissioned uh, the third, um, the third um, uh, project uh, under the Kenjin, and it's going to produce 140 uh, megawatts. And, um, and definitely, um, we, we, can, we can always give um, a, a grace period by the time these um, additional powers have been added to our grid. Uh, definitely, uh, we can take it that we are still in the transition. But Governor, how soon before the people of Nakuru can feel? We, we have been assured that this is immediate because uh, actually the president today did switch it on. He literally switched it on uh, to, one, to 140. And so this one, we have been assured uh, today that it is immediate. It we is are using immediate. generators as KTN. Can we switch off our generators right now? Uh, I, I, I have a feeling maybe before the end of, the, of this <laughs> discussion, but, but, uh, uh, perhaps um, you, you, you'd, be, you, you, you'd be interested to know. I, I was very impressed because we had uh, the, all, all those who attended today's function had uh, more or less like a one-to-one -one with the existing the president and, and, and one ordinary girl. Uh, who lives in one, uh, one of our estates in Ivasha, raised her hands and, uh, and said uh, in her estate they have never seen uh, power. It happens that is a, is a county government uh, estate and, and, and the president said um, uh, he will give her uh, his number, his tel personal uh, telephone number uh, because he was giving instruction that the power connection be done in that estate with immediate effect and he wanted uh, a feedback from mm. that lady that that has been done. Did, did he give her his number? Well, well, I trust he did. The president never says uh, anything lightly. Was, it, said, a was well, it a 0722? Well, I didn't, he did not make it public. <laughs> he did not make it public, but, but he did so. He did so. He said that lady okay. to confirm to him yeah. that in that estate power has been connected. Governor, with would you give your number to these people here in case they... The, they most, have... most, of, most of them have it. Most, most, most of Who has the most governor's of, number? And, and, and Jeff, I'll make sure my number is the easiest. You don't need to write it. It's 0722696969. And they are, it's, it's, all, it's all known. Well done. Umapata yo. 
six nine six nine six nine. Yeah. <laughs> Governor. <laughs> Somebody call that number while we are talking. Irene, let me go to you as MCA. Uh, what is the biggest challenge, in your opinion, facing women here in Nakuru County? What is the biggest challenge? The biggest challenge is employment. That is the biggest challenge we have. And uh, that is where you realize, as a county assembly, we are trying to advocate for self-employment. Because former jobs nowadays, it's becoming a challenge. You're hearing the government saying every day that the wage bill is too high. So our expectations to say that we are going to continue employing will be lying to ourselves. So we are trying to come up with issues and projects that we come and assist our women get engaged in other things other than seek formal employment, things like agriculture. When you see our governor giving one million per ethram seedlings, what does that tell you? The women of this county are the women who farm. So that tells you clearly that we are trying to move from the formal employment to informal employment. And anybody who knows agriculture, agriculture pays so well. So that is basically the main challenge for our women. Okay. Yeah. Dr. Apollos Machira, Nakuru, cosmopolitan town, mix of all ethnic tribes, if you will. Six, seven years ago during the post-election violence, this was a hotbed. How are race relations now, tribal relations right now in Nakuru town and Nakuru county? Uh, thank you, Jeff. Nakuru now is a very good town. What does that mean? What, what does good town mean? The a previous of good towns in Kenya. Previously, Nakuru used to be a very hot town. But the cosmopolitan nature of Nakuru has come a long way since the last elections. We, we do not know what happens, but I think the connection between TNA and DRP has brought a lot of peace in this country. Because a lot of conflicts there before was between these two major communities. So you're saying between Kikuyus and Kalenjins? You can yes. say that. Is that what you're saying? In very many conflicts. Do you areas. people agree? No, 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 no. Doctor, they don't agree. In very microphone. Hold on, doctor. They don't agree. You still, you still think there's tension? The conflicts. Are wait, wait. You, you think there's tension? Yes. Someone has a question here. Go on. Go on. Don't be scared. Go on. I want to congratulate the governor for this appearance in this show. You can give us your name if you want. My name is Joseph Nderetu Ngunju, and a member of ODM. I'm a life member of ODM, and uh, I aspired for the Senate in this county. So when you talk of uh, what my learned professor said, I would quite disagree. What has been there is that we are trying to familiarize ourselves with the situations. And the question I would ask you now is, how are you preparing us to receive the judgment in the ICC, whatever way it goes? Secondly, um, I did my campaigns and I went around. And we could see that there are some people who could not be touched by Kibunja, despite they were giving hate speeches. There are no enforcement ways of doing this kind of thing. I would like to turn myself down and say that, okay, we are better off than that time that we were in 2007, but the absence of war uh, absence of war does not mean we are peaceful. Mm, good point. Doctor. The, the latent conflict you are talking about is better than the manifest conflicts we had. The examples I give from my experience as a conflict resolution resolver with my center, and many of these participants have been in those forums, the conflicts we had in Akuru, Baruti, Gethima, Kaptembwa, Kerisoi, Moro, Elbagon, Barigobi, Kamwaola, you can see the, div the diversity of those conflicts. But since the communities came together, there are not so many worries. You can go to Rugai, the conflicts in Banita are low. So I think this unity has brought people together. Governor, do you agree? Well, oh, I, 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 I do agree because, uh, and I'm happy, Joseph, yeah, you have really raised that question this evening because um, one, of course, you are, if you allow me, Jeff, one of our our foremost commitment as leaders, even during the um, election time, was that we, we as leaders of Nakuru ensure that peace prevail then and, and forever. And that was our first undertaking. As we speak now, I, I must say uh, with a lot of pride that here in Nakuru we, we, have, we, have literally, we have literally been able to achieve 
that. Why do I say so? Uh, we were there before 1992 when for the first time uh, communities in Kenya rose against each other. Because before then, it was unheard of. You could not even think that in Kenya any community would rise against any other community. We were there again during when the Kenyan communities rose against each other. Mm. And we are here today. And we can tell a lot of difference. Are you going to be ready? Like the gentleman asked, are you going to be ready when a ruling is made by the ICC, despite which, which way it goes? D definitely. And, and, and I think the writing is on the wall, Jeff. Uh, Kenyans have um, really learned to appreciate the peace they are enjoying. When you see the number of prayers that Kenyans of all walks of life were offering, uh, for the deputy president for the president of this nation that the, the this issue of icc go behind their back when you see the number of P kenyans who went to the street uh, to receive the president of this nation when he was away for only um, 24 hours and he came back and these were not people of one community these were a cross-section of all the kenyans mm. uh, honestly without prejudicing what is already before court, uh, I, I, I think Kenyans have, uh, have spoken. But there's also that, that question, what, yeah, Governor, there's also that question of uh, pamphlets being distributed around some communities, some neighborhoods. Yeah. Is that true, Governor? I mean, uh, there's still a little, you must admit, there must be a bit of uh, tension. Jeff, Jeff let, let, let me tell you, Jeff, and that is why I, I came from where we came from, because we know how this place was before. If two drunkards, be they children, be they adults, ever insulted each other or assaulted each other, wherever they were, it was always interpreted as a tribal class. If a goat was ever stolen somewhere, it would always be interpreted that my neighboring community is the one which has stolen. These days, people are doing their social activity, they are fighting, they are taking each other as animals, and nobody today is standing at the other community. Mm. I, I, we have, I can assure you, Nakuru has matured. It, you can always yeah. get a pamphlet uh, here and there. Mm. Not only in Nakuru, but anywhere in the, in the country mm. and in the, in the world. Does it help that you are a former boss of the uh, uh, administrative police? Does it, it help? It helps me because I really understand the security dynamics of, uh, of this, of this, uh, of the... Uh, of, of this country and of this country and i can sense from far i can smell whether when there is tension mm. and when there is no tension what are you smelling can, now uh, there, there governor, were days, governor, governor what are you smelling right now I'm, I'm smelling i'm smelling peace because there were days if you mention if you mention that there is a pamphlet talking about another community i would not sleep Today I cannot even no, take note of it because I can sense that there's no tension. Mm. Good. <laughs> Maswali, Maswali. Uh, Bwana Governor Unjambo. Sijabo. My name is Moses Getonga. I don't want to touch on the member of uh, peace, but in Gilgil we maintain peace Mwaka was 07. It is unfortunate, this is, a, by the way, it's unfortunate we talk <coughs> about the Kikuyus and the Kalejin. Just the other day, Wakato and Peketoni, we had people moving from Naivasha because of what transpired the other time. Okay, Moses. So, this, we are this, close with that. This is not Lamu County. Let's carry on. Yes. Now, my question is actually of Article 36 of the Constitution that guarantees freedom of association. You can check there. Governor, you're on record. Having said that you do not want any referendum campaign within Nakuru County. Mm. Is that not in contravention of the Constitution? My question is, or are, one, what informed your decision to make that statement? Number two, is it because Nakuru County do not need more funding? Or was it 
for political expedience. Thank you. Governor, I, I think the headline was you declared Nakuru County a referendum free zone. Is that what it was? Yes. Governor. Uh, Jeff, Jeff um, uh, I must say thank you very much uh, for Moses Gitonga uh, because what's happening is that Gitonga is asking a question and answering it himself and I'm happy because he makes my work easier. Um, <laughs> to start with, uh, he has started by saying that in Ivasha, uh, when uh, and Gilgil, when there was mention of uh, Sabasaba meetings, some communities feared and they even started to, to, move, to move away. And uh, what did we do as leaders led by the governor of Nakuru? We assured the people who were moving away that they need not move away. Then I led the people of Nakuru imploring those who wanted to have Sabasaba meetings here in Nakuru not to do it here. Not for me, but because of those people who were fearing. And the moment those who had intended to hold meetings here, and I thank them, they took heed because we are on the ground and we are the ones who understand what is happening here. They took heed, they said and they pronounced it in public, they will not hold the meetings here. The tension went down immediately. And uh, it went down immediately. Okay. okay. Irene Jerry Paul, do you agree? Do the women come and tell you, look, man, there's tension here. There's tension. We feel those people don't like us. Do you get that from your women? Yes, we do. Jeff, you will realize that women bear the burden of war. It is not easy for women during war. They take care of their children. They need to take care of the property as the men keep vigil in the cities. So our women realize clearly that Nakuru is not a place where you can joke around. When there is something, as you've said, you've heard the governor say clearly, just a leaflet. There are those times when just a leaflet will shake the whole county. You feel the tension everywhere. The women will not be safe. And they say, this is not the way to go. And the women have played a very big role in coming this county led by the groups of women, Mandeleo Yawanawake, everybody, everyone takes up that role of advocating for peace in this county. Mm. And I must say the peace in Nakuru County has been adv advocated for by the women. That is what I must say. Dr. Paulus Mashira, yeah, 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 yeah. Go ahead. Dr. Paulus Mashira, the, 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 what can we avoid? What can we do to avoid another 2007-2008? Actually, what the governor did, because through our reports, we have peace monitors all over. And we do early warning. I'm happy that the governor does early response because there was a lot of tension. And Nakuru is becoming very good because a little while ago, some, some of these community members could not live in Gata or Baruti or Gizima or Naka. So that you find Naka people are living as a community of, you know, one ethnic. Mm. Let me ask the people here because, you know, you guys are sounding very optimistic. Are there tensions? Yeah. Are there tensions? Sana kwa majina ni Andrew Yatech, coordinator Nakuru County Peace Process and Peace Accord. Ninaenda kusema neno moja ambaye daktari umesema ujui hii amani ambaye iko Nakuru ilitokana namna gani? Ilitoka hivi. Kabla usajakuzi ya 2013 Tulianza mwaka ine kabla Mwaka tatu kabla All communities tukaketi chini Mwisho We signed an accord Lakini kwa hiyo kukaa chini We analyzed in detail Three things Causes of conflicts In Akuru County Are what Parties to these conflicts Are who and it was all communities, not Kikuyus and Kalenjins alone. Yeah. Thirdly, possible and sustainable solutions to those problems. So we signed our peace accord, and we are happy that the leadership in Akuru this time, even our governor, when we were doing the Nakuru peace process, 
he was busy on another one called peace caravan. So this is an effort which after the elections, we've not really followed on it. And I'm shocked, Daktari, that you are doing peace work and you are not aware of what the peace accord said. I was the leader one, of the process. One, one was equitable the distribution of resources, which our able governor is trying as much as possible. So the way forward is let us go back, look at those causes and help sustain them. Indeed. By hosting other meetings, many other meetings, not waiting for Chev to come. Hmm. Thank you very much. Yeah. But, but, but I can still come, eh? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, we're gonna do we're gonna take a quick break because we need your questions coming, okay? It is your forum, it's about you the people. These are your leaders. You may not get a chance to ask a question for quite a while. So Speaker Sasa will take a break and we'll come back and answer your questions. Please don't go away. Keep tweeting at UNDP Kenya at KTN Kenya, at Koinanga, Jeff, the hashtag is Sikikasasa. Kwasababu Kamasi Sasa. Take a break. Back in a moment. <laughs>